What's up, mamas? My name is Maggie Schott. I'm back with another Bojan Express Yourself video. Welcome to the YouTube channel where we share tips, tricks, and all things helpful on your mommying journey. In today's video, we're going to talk about safe sleep. Now, October is Infant Safe Sleep and SIDS Awareness Month. Um, SIDS meaning a sudden infant death syndrome. <music> So we're going to take a moment to ask you, would your nursery pass the safe sleep test? If not, we've got you covered here with tips and information from the American Academy of Pediatrics that will help you create a safe sleep environment for your little one. Now, sleep seems like a benign topic, right? It seems like something that should be relatively safe just in general. But still, every year within the United States alone, about 3,400 infants die during their sleep. So the American Academy of Pediatrics is really working on studying this issue and they're coming out with, or they've been updating their guidelines as they continue to study. So we're going to break some of these guidelines down for you. Okay, so first and foremost, we're going to talk about what your baby sleeps in and where they sleep. Crib, number one, bassinet, cot, or some kind of variation of those. Now, all of them are okay, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, but they should have a firm bottom or mattress on which your baby sleeps. Think about the more pillowy top kind of scenario or insert or blanket you're putting into these sleep options, the higher the risk for suffocation, right? If baby turns over, and get stuck, they might not be able to lift their head and safely get out of that position. So nice firm mattress, regardless of what product, <laughs> as long as that product is safe. Now the location. Yes, babies have, uh, in many cases, have their own rooms. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that at least for the first six months, if not the full first year, you place a safe sleep environment like a crib, bassinet, or cot within your own room. One of the reasons is uh, that it reduces the risk of SIDS by up to 50% in studies that they found. Not to mention it makes getting up and feeding that baby and then getting back to bed a little bit easier. Also, there is a recommendation to stay away from any kind of added pillow or sleep form or support aid. The more you introduce into your crib, the higher level of danger that you're getting into. If you're putting some kind of wedge underneath your baby, you're creating the potential for baby's head to kind of fall forward or fall into a position in which they cannot breathe. If baby's really young, they can't pick their head back up, they might not wake up to do so. So just remember, try to keep these aids out of the crib if you can. Um, even if they make the claim that they help reduce uh, SIDS, they're not, they're not shown to, and they, and the studies are there. So please, uh, if you are considering something, if you've read information on a product, it's a really good idea to reach out to a safe sleep coach. Uh, there's a certification that these people go through to make sure that they understand the data and the studies that are done and why these recommendations are in place. And they can help give you more information about that specific product. Also, your pediatrician is a good source of information on these as well. So continuing in the sleep environment, if you have a, let's talk about cribs just for um, sake of an example. We want the crib sheet to be a nice fitted sheet that snugly fits over the mattress. Shouldn't be loose and it shouldn't be something that as babies rolling around can kind of come off. So whether you make those yourself, whether you buy them, uh, whatever you use, just make sure that it is really snug around that mattress. No additional blankets in the crib. Any additional cloth, blanket, sheet, it's just an increased risk for suffocation. And in that same train of thought, no more bumpers. I know they're cute and they make those like knitted ones and they're just like adorable and they fit the theme of your nursery. And you're thinking that it's helping protect your baby from rolling up against the hard surface of the side of the crib, but they really do or have been shown to increase suffocation hazard for babies. So no more bumpers. 
what you can do, um, what they say is okay, is like a crib rail. So as your baby gets a little bit bigger or older and can kind of stand up and you're worried about their face or their chin hitting the rail of the crib, or if you want a nice little pad as you're leaning over the edge of the crib and putting baby down to sleep, um, they recommend the, the those those rail covers they say are safe. They just recommend that they should be fixed in place. So whether they tie, snap, or somehow fasten, um, they should be something that baby can't reach up and pull down. So don't just fold a blanket up and, and lay it over the railing of your crib. Also, I, no couches, no pillow forms that, you know, baby, if baby is sleeping, they should be in a safe place like a cot or a bassinet. They make travel bassinets that you can move around your house if you need to or portable ones. Where Whenever your baby is sleeping, it doesn't matter where they fall asleep, they should be transferred into a safe sleep space. So that's another question that often gets asked. Like if I'm out driving and my baby falls asleep in the car seat, or if I'm on a walk and baby falls asleep in the stroller, the American Academy of Pediatrics says that's okay. They can fall asleep in those spaces, swings, all kinds of things. But as they fall asleep and as you are able to do so, so if you're out and about the minute you get home, you should transfer your baby from those carriers, car seats, strollers into their crib, their bassinet, wherever you have them sleep. Um, it gets into a whole argument or a whole discussion, but the American Academy of Pediatrics also says that you know, there should be no co-sleeping. If you're bringing baby into your bed, it should be feeding and for comfort only, not co-sleeping. Um, and they have not studied. There are on the market, you can get like, like places to put your like pillow forms and stuff to place your baby in bed with you and make it safer, but they haven't been able to study those uh, at length. So they, they don't have a recommendation on that. So if you can, and if you're str striving to follow these guidelines, really make sure that baby has their own safe place to sleep, that it's in proximity to you, that there are no additional bumpers, pillows, or blankets, anything that can get or pose a potential hazard. Stuffed animals, if they're playing with a stuffy or they have something that they love throughout the day, if you use the crib to store things, um, that's fine. But make sure when you're placing baby down to sleep that you remove those items. So anything in the crib, they roll over and they start to be able to move around. They could get entangled with those items and they could just become uh, a hazard. So if there is anything in the crib when you're putting baby down, take it out just for a safe sleep. There is a great resource out there if you do have any questions on whether a product is safe or not or considered approved by the AAP, these products will be approved by the Consumer Product Safety Commission, or CPSC. Mobiles are great. They, especially the ones, some of them light up, some of them, some of them play music, they move around. It can be a great way to relax baby to sleep. But if you're putting a mobile by your baby's sleep space, just make sure that they're totally out of baby's reach so that baby can't reach up and grab on them and pull them, that they're securely attached to whether it's the wall, the ceiling, or, or the side of the crib. And also make sure that if it's something that you had to put together, if you've made it yourself, that all pieces are firmly attached and will not at some point fall down into the crib with baby. Okay, so now that we've talked about baby's sleep space, let's talk about safe sleep positioning. When we were younger, the school of thought or best practices was to place a baby on their belly or their tummy and have them sleep. Now that has been studied at great length and it is no longer recommended. It is not safe. Baby should always be placed on their back. So just remember back is best if you have any, you know, concerns about that. Now, because of this, um, there's a few questions like what if my baby has GERD or some kind of gastrointestinal kind of issue. It's still recommended that they sleep on their back. Babies are really able to, you know, they can turn their head. Um, stomach is just, it's been shown not to be safe. Now that begs the question, what if my baby rolls over? 
we're spending a lot of time, you know, trying to get them, encourage them to, to lift up their heads and then to roll over and to move around. So it's inevitable that it's going to happen over the course of the, the night. Now, if you notice or if you're awake and see uh, that your baby has rolled over, make sure you place them back or return them to the back in the crib. Now, if your baby is safely able to roll from their back to their belly and their belly onto their back again, the AAP says that that's okay. If they roll over at that point, then you can kind of leave them there, but just kind of keep an eye on them. You know, just, I think there's a good bit of judgment that you have as a mom that you can kind of tell whether your baby's in a safe position or not. Sometimes they get stuck halfway, you know, it's this gray area. Just try to keep an eye out if you can, when you wake up, when you're putting them back into bed, watch them for a minute to see if they roll over, those kinds of things. There are loads of sleep aids now that help babies fall asleep and stay asleep. Um, and they also help promote safe sleep. Traditionally, the swaddle has reigned supreme right in, in this area. So a swaddle or a swaddle blanket is often what you're sent home from the hospital with, like a receiving blanket, sometimes it's called. And it's just a small square blanket and they teach you how to um, fold the top corner down, lay baby down on top of this blanket, and then kind of burrito roll them up in it. This is to calm or prevent baby's startle reflex. So it's something natural that all babies do. They kind of startle in the middle of the night and it wakes them up. So by swaddling them, you're keeping their arms closer to their body and limiting their ability to move so they can't startle themselves awake. If you don't like the swaddle blanket option, like my husband struggled with it for days, um, some people are just not sure whether it's going to come undone in the middle of the night. If it does and you notice that the swaddle blanket has come undone, swaddle them back up, wrap them back up, and put them back in their crib. Or if they're doing okay, if they're older, you know, whatever the case is, just remove the, the blanket from the crib. You don't want that extra bit of fabric there. Another great option now are the sleep sacks. So sleep sacks are essentially a swaddle blanket, but they're just sewn into a different configuration. They often resemble a sack that you either zip up your baby into or um, Velcro baby into, or they sometimes they snap. But these are great tools to help get baby to sleep and stay asleep without worrying about whether blankets come undone or not. We loved our sleep sacks. I ended up making uh, my own pattern for them. We just love them so much and we couldn't get enough. And there's so many fun patterns and they're great. Now they come in weighted options as well. So if you think of the, the weighted blanket for an adult, it's kind of like that for a baby. Um, again, just check to make sure whatever you're doing, whether it's a pattern you're making or whether you're buying an aid, that it's just a safe design and um, that there aren't pieces that are going to come off or um, that it's not going to create a bunch of excess fabric around your baby as they're sleeping. Babies can generally still roll over in a sleep sack. So just because you've wrapped them up, burritoed your baby up in a sleep sack, it doesn't mean that they're not going to move around on you. So you still want to keep an eye on them. Also, if you notice any defects in them through over the course of wear and tear, maybe they're a hand-me-down if the zipper is not functioning right. If any snaps have come off, just keep an eye on these and make sure that they're safe. Another uh, thing to keep in mind when you're swaddling or using a sleep sack, questions asked often, is my baby overdressed? How do I know if my baby's warm enough? We have a great podcast episode with Sleep Coach and IBCLC and just all around amazing mama Megan Copeland. I'm going to link that in the description box below this video. She's got some great tips on how you know whether your baby is dressed appropriately or overdressed. If you're worried about baby being cold, you don't need to put an extra blanket in the crib. Generally, those um, footy PJs that are fleece or flannel and a sleep sack is enough for a really cold night. Generally, your house shouldn't be that cold, right? It shouldn't be so cold that you're worried about your baby sleeping. If the temperature is going to dip overnight or you're worried about a power outage or something, um, try a warmer set of PJs and a sleep sack. No extra blankets though. Okay, a couple last items and then you're all done with this video. One thing we want to highlight, it's something that the AAP really points out, monitors and the wearable monitors are great. They help us keep an eye on their baby, on our babies when they're napping, but 
we shouldn't allow them to lull us into a false sense of security. These are monitoring tools. They are not any kind of prevention. So they do not prevent against SIDS in any way, shape, or form. So please just make sure you stay vigilant, keep an eye on your baby, even if you are using one of these monitoring tools. Lastly, breastfed babies tend to have a reduced risk of SIDS. So there is a good link between breastfeeding and your baby's safe sleep. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll drop all kinds of links below so that you can get more information on this. We'll link out to the AAP so that you can read more about these guidelines for yourself. Please give us a like on this video. Stick around and watch some more. We've got loads here on all kinds of breastfeeding and uh, infant related topics. And we will see you ladies in the next video. Thanks so much, mamas. Have a great day. Thank you.